Harry Moran in Washington. This is Nightline, July 2nd, 2010, with Terry Moran. American Idol has produced multiple Grammy Award winners, not to mention an Oscar winner, but its biggest stars may be the judges. Of course, Paula already left, Simon's out next. Among those staying on is Cara Diaguardi, and while she may not be the biggest name, you can bet you know her music. Vicki Mabry sits down with Cara Diaguardi in the Nightline interview. Christina Aguilera singing Ain't No Other Man have to do with Celine Dion's Taking Chances. Or Gwen Stefani asking, rhetorically, if I was a rich girl. They're all hits, and they all share the same songwriter, a dynamo named Cara Diaguardi. Cara Diagarn... Diagarment? Diagardi? Sounds like diarrhea. Giaguardi. Giaguardi? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a chia pet. People in the business know her name. She's written hundreds of songs, more than 45 of which have appeared on albums on Billboard's top 10 list. Writing used to be her day job, till she joined American Idol. For some reason, I thought it would be the greatest thing ever, and it would just be happy, 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 and fabulous. And, and while it's been incredible, there were also some very difficult things that came along with it. Such as? I think America felt like I was there to replace Paula, and Paula was so famous, so loved, so nurturing. Some fans thought she pushed Paula out. Kara says they're still friends. I would say we're friends. I don't speak to her as much. You know, I've, I've definitely texted her, and, and we, we hugged each other at the finale. And, and but she doesn't blame you? She doesn't think you came along? And I hope not, because I certainly never wanted to do that. I think that she made the decision. Well, I know she made the decision to leave. It was time for her. She learned quickly, tossing off a little Mariah riff when necessary. The one with the guts and the body to step up when challenged by the idol hopeful known as Bikini Girl. I just think it pops. Yeah. She's grown into the judging role, she says. Not bad for a kid from suburban New York, the daughter of a politician and a homemaker who recognized their girl had talent. Y'all looking swell, Dolly. Dad went and got all the videos from the basement and put them online, and I, I almost died when I saw them. Daddy, I'll never go away again. Okay. I'm like, dirty. I have braces, and my hair's like wing back. And you're singing show tunes. Of course. Hello, Dolly. I mean, that's all we learned. When rock music came on, I was, shut that off, quiet. But it was the rock music that stuck. Let me hear that let's blow it up. Lime right before. Even though she went to Duke University to study opera. I went to one class and was like, no way. There's no way I'm doing that. Abs. Oh, I was like, no. But did it almost take the music out of you? No, it put the music in me. When I graduated, I wanted to be an artist. And no one would give me their songs. And that's when I became a songwriter. She moved to L.A. at Paula's invitation to write a song for her. But that song, Spinning Around, went to Australian pop sensation Kylie Minogue. And I was kind of really upset. This was my big break, and it was Paula, and it was amazing. And then I saw the video, and it was just her derriere. Like, it was just her butt, the whole video. And I was like, well, maybe it will sell. I don't know. It did. Other performers came calling, asking for songs, but Kara wanted to sing her own songs. After a while, I was signed as an artist and then dropped. Why do you think they dropped you? I had no real understanding of who I was as an artist. I don't even know that I do now. I just know who I am as a person. It's a big difference. She learned a lot about who she was during the seven years her mother battled ovarian cancer. She died when Kara was 26. And that's when the Cara Diaguardi we know now was born. She dug deep inside to find the words to co-write tunes like Mama's Song with Idol winner Carrie Underwood. Mama, there's no way you'll ever lose me. 
She hasn't been inspired yet to write one about her new husband, Michael McCutty. Her songs are usually about the boyfriend's a loser, you know, this thing, which is good. I don't want a song. <laughs> the guy's a jerk. Wish me luck. She credits Mike and American Idol with giving her the confidence to conquer her stage fright, enabling her to perform her songs in concert. I basically go on stage and I sing a bunch of songs that I've co-written that were hits. So how do I feel this And then there's a 15-minute question and answer period. You know, is Simon really that mean? Does Randy really say dog that much? What's it like with Ella? You know, like that kind of stuff, which is really fun. With Simon Cowell moving on to his new show, X Factor, in the fall, Kara doesn't plan on becoming the new mean judge. So who do you want to replace him? I liked Harry Connick. I thought he was great. So you have to get off that note quicker. Okay. Uh, which uh, note? Uh, when you go, uh, OK, we'll work on colors and shapes <laughs> next. What do you mean, which note? The way that he worked with the contestants, it's very nurturing. I thought he was really, really great. Regardless of who else is at the judge's table, look for the girl with the funny name to be back, dishing out the tough love. Yikes, guys. It wasn't good. It really wasn't. The one who knows, from her own hard knocks, what it takes to get to the top. This is Vicki Mabry for Nightline in Los Angeles. Harry Connick replacing Simon Cowell. Might be interesting. We'll see. Thanks to Vicki Mabry for that.